Look, gamers aren't perfect. Even the pros make mistakes sometimes that leave us scratching our heads and wondering how they even survive for this long. And it's not just players either. Entire tournaments can be derailed by a single dumb decision. So today, we wanted to rank those mistakes. Here are the top 10 biggest screw-ups in esports history. Opening up today's list is a rare League of Legends team kill from the 2017 World Championship. Cody Sutton loses his mind by flashing into an entire team at the end. Up against an 0-4 Fnatic in the group stage, Immortals just needed to beat them one time to knock them out of the tournament. But after a late game team fight erupted in the bot lane, Fnatic found the upper hand. Seeing his mid laner go down, Immortals AD carry Cody Sun went for a hero play. But things didn't exactly work out for him. They want this one, the chase forward on public, they're not quite the blade color range, and just barely missing onto that Miyazaki, but there's still more to be done, they look for the kill, Revlin's gonna come in, and Brock's gonna get the kill credit on that one, and the flash bar, Cody oh, Sun, oh. the insect, but betrays his teammate, and it's gonna be the ace for Fnatic! Cody Sun loses his mind by flashing into an entire team at the end. Fnatic went on to win their next three games to make it out of the group, including a tiebreaker against Immortals, making this particular screw-up sting just a little bit more. Next on our list is arguably one of the biggest disasters in esports history, 2015's Gaming Paradise. Gaming Paradise was a tournament in Slovenia, originally set to feature both Dota 2 and CSGO, but due to a slew of problems both in and out of the TO's control, only the CSGO tournament happened, but it barely happened. Beginning with the qualifiers, players flew into the country to find out that the buses sent to pick them up were late, with players waiting until 3 a.m. to get into their hotel rooms. But the delays didn't end there. The qualifiers, which were supposed to be played outside the next day, were delayed due to a random storm. But at the main event a few months later, things only got worse. The actual tournament didn't have good PCs, the streams were riddled with technical issues, and oh yeah, the police showed up to confiscate players' passports because the tournament's financier didn't actually pay for room and board. Uh, first bad thing that happened today, uh, one of our staff members from Gaming RS approached me and told me that uh, he can't get his passport, and uh, I really didn't know uh, what is happening because um, who doesn't want to give passports to, to, to people because that, that's your personal ID. There's a good reason why we never got a Gaming Paradise 2. Coming in at number 8 is an embarrassing fail from Myth. <laughs> Chad, if we could press F to pay respects, rest in peace, bud. Myth is one of the most popular Fortnite players in the world, and at the game's first LAN tournament, everyone pegged him as a favorite. I think something that I'm super, like, so the main feeling that I'm feeling right now is, like, super anxious. I just want to get up there and just, like, play, like, never mind that this interview, let me just on there, you know? But during the tournament, Myth got a little too close to the edge, making a mistake that's gone down in Fortnite history. I did like the, the last couple engagements. He saw an opportunity to take advantage, distraction. <gasps> oh! Oh, my God! Myth just fell off the map! Myth just fell off the map. Did not stick the landing. <laughs> Chad, if we could press F to pay respects, rest in peace, bud. Myth just fell off the map. Well, based on what he said earlier, that's the one game that he's going to lose in this heat, right? I guess the one thing that I just don't want to do is die to fall damage. I have a record for doing that, so as long as I don't die to fall damage, I think I'm going to be pretty good. You know what I mean? As long as I don't die to fall damage. Taking number seven on our list is the catastrophic Warcraft 3 Reforged launch tournament. We have no Breath of Fire, by the way. It is Drunken Haze, so big mischance on these Dragon Hawks at a disconnect. I'm gonna assume Thalzain dropped, but I feel yes. like Moon was on the way to holding this attack. Oof. Ooh, wow. Warcraft 3 Reforged was supposed to be one of the biggest games of 2020. Instead, it was a mess of bugs and broken promises. These bugs were not only painful to sit through, but they also ruined games. At the launch tournament, Thorzane was about to beat Moon, the best Warcraft 3 player of all time, but then got kicked out of the game before he could win. Twice. You're benched. Once this... And looks like another drop just happens. Oh, wow. It got so bad, the tournament said screw it and reverted the game back to its 20-year-old classic version. Not a great look for a launch tournament. 
Coming in at number six is the broken meta that terrorized World 2015. The dragon is still chasing the enemy AD carry. Lloyd's got to be careful. And oh, down they the go. A value. double kill. The dragon value is big on this one. All is well. There's a triple kill. They're going for four. For some reason, Riot decided to introduce a whole new type of champion to the game before Worlds called Chuggernaut, reworking a few champs to fit the new class. This ended up making Darius and Mordekaiser pretty broken. A big knockback, and that's the kill into Morgana. Azir goes down as well, but the tugs are coming through. A double kill for Boss, a triple kill for that's Boss. Nice. Holy cow, the go. get back. Add a broken gangplank and a shallow jungle pool to the meta, and Worlds that year became a complete shit show. Thankfully, this mess taught Riot not to completely change their game right before the biggest tournament of the year. Coming in the halfway point on our list today is a mess up from Jensen at the 2017 LCS Spring Finals. Jensen didn't get his Zonias off, didn't get his ultimate off. He goes down in the critical fight. One game away from earning his first domestic title, all Jensen had to do was pop Zonias to avoid dying. Except he forgot to use it. Here we go. Here's Ray. And as well, I'll just win. Scarab's going to try keep them out. Redemption down Ray. Dies by giving hold. They kill Jensen. 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 Jensen gets the kill. And now Ray. Stunned up Sneaky across. Sneaky the side. Still trying to fight around, but he can't get in the fight. Smoothie. Far too low. Goes down. This mistake not only cost Jensen a potential LCS title, but fans would continue to meme on him for his mistake for years. Even TSM BM'd him two years later, when he met them in the 2019 LCS Spring Finals and they hovered Echo. Though this time, Jensen didn't make the same mistake, reverse sweeping TSM to win his first LCS title, and for some more icing on that cake, this time, it was a TSM player who made the game losing blunder. Sven. No quick silver sash. He is down. He is shut down. What is he now doing? The Baron. In Overwatch, pulling a C9 is when a team throws a map because they forgot to hop on the objective. It's an embarrassing mistake, and that's why it's taking the number four spot on our list. Oh, they got off the What? They walked off the car. Oh, young Jin. Oh my god. That was actually a C9. That is a big old C9. The origin of how C9 got attached to this mistake stems all the way back to OGN's old Apex tournament. It's at this tournament where C9 forgot to hop on the objective three times in a row. Yeah, you heard me right. Three times. He's got the whole hog. There's the pulse bomb going in and a couple kills. Mendo does get the one onto Dongyun. Going on to that, and it looks like Afrika Blue. Did they just not touch the point? I guess not. Well, that was a bit odd. Arhan's going to get taken out. Can't really do much about that. Adam in trouble. Mendo trying to run what? away. What? Nobody saw the Are points. you kidding me? Again? What? This is what's been so annoying in the past with Cloud9 with a great position. There's the self destruct, though. Oh, oh no! the overtime! The overtime. Nobody was able to stay on the point. Truly a night that no one will forget. Our number three entry goes to the single most embarrassing screw up in fighting game history. He's gonna have to do so oh, he can't! No, no burst! No so burst! Oh my so god! Smart. Genius! So smart, he couldn't burst because of the super. But will she get Dixon? It's over! Down, oh, down, 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 down. What and the bell one doesn't get He still got Z oh, by the Oh my god! Where's she gonna go? Gave him no remorse. That is exactly what happens. Don't have celebration. Pop off. Pop oh off. my god. Ogawa calmly took the set before Woshige even realized his mistake, creating an unforgettable moment in Evo history that even reached traditional sports television. Uh, Ogawa won the semifinal match, eventually won the Evo tournament. As I said, he the won the tournament. Yeah, the world's his mistake. Let him win in the tournament. Can we keep that celebration and go back to it several times? Both celebrations were good. First, I'm going to tell you right now. One. Executive decision. I want to shut up. For the last 30 minutes of the show, we're running that on a loop. Look, we've all picked the wrong hero by accident once, but have you ever had $34 million on the line when you misclicked? I don't think so. I will say, if I'm a Storm, I'd love to be in a situation where I'm against the Lesh, as they're going to take the Gyrocopter for themselves, so this is going to be an offlane void. I'm 
That's that is true. Something that we definitely did not expect. Alliance made a big draft oopsie in an elimination match against RNG at the International 2019, but Alliance brushed it off, kept their cool, and tried to get the W despite this unfortunate error. Oh my, oh my god. Are you serious? <laughs> Whatever. Did this just happen? <laughs> it's fine. Right, we gotta deal with oh it. Oh my yeah, god. Uh, I can fuck why didn't it? Okay, uh, uh sorry guys. How about offlanes? Uh, I can also play mid let's see what they pick, okay? Let's see what they pick. Don't pick yeah. your heroes, guys. Don't worry, don't worry, we got this. But unfortunately, things didn't work out for him. 43 minutes into the game, we have ourselves a match where both sides really they had their chance. Right? Uh, they had their game plan, things started to come online. Obviously the disappointment here for Alliance. And topping off today's list is none other than iBuyPower's CSGO match fixing scandal. We've just had uh, like five players, one gambling dude, and uh, the guy who runs Netcode Kites have just all received back right now. I by Power were one of the most exciting CSGO teams in the early days of the game, looking far and away like the best squad in NA, featuring burgeoning stars like Brax, then known as Swag. But all that hype came crashing down in August 2014 when I by Power threw a match. And it's very weird to see Steel opting over Skadoodle. I don't know if Skadoodle is not feeling it right now or what is going on, but I by Power is definitely not playing like I by Power. Cutler's going to peek out, and Steel is right here with the CZ doesn't go for the shot he's gonna try and get the flank off he's gonna have two right there can they line up for him what is he doing why did he hesitate so much doesn't matter has the cz gets one are they really just gonna wait the timeout right now is this really happening no, oh skadoodle so. <laughs> skadoodle why would i don't understand jdm with a 3k that will be a seventh round for netcode guides but you just watched your teammate get up from Jay. I gotta say, the entries are looking a little weak for my right power along with the strats. I mean, they're just doing very basic things. They're trying to just fully attack these sites and not really using any smokes or pop flashes for the most part to their advantage, and it's very unlike them. The result of this screw-up was the permanent banning of the entire team, minus Skadoodle, a decision that some feel was far too harsh. I think it's a very sad history that he can't compete anymore. For me, it's a little bit too harsh for what happened, and uh, for being the first time it ever happened. Despite years of community cries to unban these players, iBuyPower's mistake proved irreversible in the eyes of Valve. Sure, many of those players found new homes in Valorant last year, but this mistake robbed these guys, who look to have very bright futures, from truly competing for years. And for that, the iBuyPower scandal is the greatest and most unfortunate esports screw-up. All right, folks, that's our list. If you haven't done it already, make sure to hit that sub button, subscribe to us, and turn on notifications. And hey, if you've already done that, grab a friend and make them sub to the channel because I'm sure they'll appreciate the content. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers and every sub counts. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. One time in middle school, I said, I guess I said salt and vinegar chips and I said it, I think I slurred it because I have a lisp and uh, especially as a kid, like I, my, I just said things bad. Anyway, I said that and someone thought I said Sullivan and for the rest of middle school, people called me Sullivan. My name is not Sullivan. No one else is, anyway, they called me Sully or Sullivan for three years, it was brutal. Bullied incessantly because I, I f***ed up the pronunciation of the word vinegar, anyway. Horrible, kids are the worst, don't be a kid. If you're a kid, stop being a kid, kids are terrible.